Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and today I want to talk about how to flatten some faces because it's just something I've been playing around with and it's pretty fun. So let me show you basically what I'm talking about. So here is former President Barack Obama. This is just the normal photo you find of him. It's like the most presidential one, I guess. I don't know. And here, <laughs> here is a picture of him uh, with his face uh, flattened. And this is essentially what we're gonna do. Uh, you can do it in this oval shape or you can do it in any, any shape that you can make a UV map of. And we're gonna talk about what that means. So basically we're gonna be flattening some faces in Blender and we are gonna be using the Keen Tools add-on to do this. Um, if you don't know what this is, I made a tutorial about that, which will be linked in the description, but I'm also gonna go over uh, some of the stuff you need to know, but not you know how to install the add-on and all that. So watch that tutorial. So first of all, let's open up a Blender. I'm using version 2.81a, which I'm gonna make full screen. And the basic workflow of what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna have some photo, in this case of Barack Obama, but you can use any photo. We're then gonna use the add-on to put a face um, aligned to that photo with the same geometry and everything. So it's gonna be a mesh of that face. We're then gonna project the texture onto it. So now it's a mesh of the face with the texture. And then we just cut everything except the face off. We just sever it and then unwrap uh, the face to get the texture. That's the general idea. Uh, let's get into it. So first of all, uh, making the mesh for the face, we need to delete everything. And assuming you already have the Keen Tools add-on installed, which again, I have a tutorial of, and it seems like every other uh, Blender YouTuber has followed suit. Um, shots not fired. Uh, we're gonna open up Face Builder and create a new head. And then we're just gonna add in our image, in this case of former President Barack Obama. Let's put that in there. And then we want to align our view to this uh, photo. And at this point, we're just gonna do the normal pinning process. Again, I don't really care about the sensor width and the focal length because I didn't take this picture. I don't know anything about it. So I'm just gonna have it do focal length estimation. And then we use the normal um, pinning process, which is fine because we don't need to do it for several photos. So I like to start off with the nose and then I like uh, obvious features like the uh, tear ducts of the eyes. So let's do the first tear duct. At this point, we are just rotating and uh, scaling the base mesh and same for the third pin. But remember, everything after the first three pins is gonna start deforming our mesh. So the uh, head actually specifically will look like Barack Obama's head and not mine. So let's do, let's go to lips is the next obvious feature. So now we're starting to deform the mesh. So we're gonna do both corners. And then probably the next most obvious feature is the top of the ear or the bottom of the earlobe. I'm just gonna put one there and I'm gonna put another over here. And since we're only doing this for one photo, it probably makes sense to do this as accurately as possible. So let's do, you know, the other side. Maybe that's the tear duct. I think the tear duct is the one in the middle. Um, anatomy is not my strong suit. I will, I will, uh, I will not pretend like it is. Um, let's bring down the earlobes. And by the way, uh, even though you can do this with, with uh, just one image, you can do the same process with multiple images, but then you can unwrap more than the face because you can get the side of the head or even the back of the head. Uh, but the results are funniest with just a face. Uh, bridge of the nose, bring that down. We can also mess with the nostrils. And the more uh, accurately you do this, the, I mean, it doesn't really matter because the end product is so goofy, but the more accurate it's gonna be, uh, which is nice. Um, eyebrows is something I didn't actually cover in the tutorial, but the eyebrows are highlighted, so we actually know uh, which part of the mesh to align. So now let's do this eyebrow as well. Make sure to bring the center up to capture the expression. So, so far, this is what we have. Uh, you can see he's kind of doing this smiling thing, uh, which we captured with the eyebrows and the mouth and everything. So let's just go back into there. And the mouth is pretty good. I think now the only things we should really be adjusting is maybe the sides of the ear, because he has some pretty big ears. And then also we should take care of the uh, cheeks area, or the jawline, I guess. So let's bring this inwards. He has a pretty skinny face, put that in there. And then we can also um, do neck aligning, which in this case isn't that important since we're probably just gonna be deleting it, but we can do that as well. Now, at this point, I would say this is pretty well aligned. You can of course do the head as well, bring this up. 
uh, but I'm not gonna be doing that because again, we only have focus on the face. So once you are happy uh, with what your mesh is looking like, you know, this actually kind of looks pretty similar to him. Uh, all we have to do is of course, I'm just gonna go back to this view. Uh, once we're happy with this, uh, we are gonna create our texture, which in this case is pretty much just gonna project uh, forwards because it doesn't have to blend between multiple photos. But uh, a 2K texture is fine. Um, if your image is very high resolution, make sure that this is high resolution. But if you're starting with a garbage photo, uh, you're not gonna get any extra detail by having your texture be a high resolution. And for the UV map, it also doesn't matter because we're gonna be changing this. So I'm just gonna keep it a standard and let's create the texture. And this shouldn't take too long. It's just gonna be projecting and setting up a simple material. Should be set up, there we go. Um, and we can see that we actually did a pretty good job. You can see the geometry of this eyebrow. Uh, the texture is exactly where it's supposed to be. We don't have any drifting where, you know, the eye and the pupil and everything is up here or anything like that. Okay, so this is looking pretty good, but of course, uh, since we care about the face, uh, we don't really want uh, the splotchiness over here or over here, and we can fix that manually, but before we do anything like that, we wanna see if Keen Tools can automatically handle this for us. Um, so, what I'm gonna do is again, the expand edges option is what we want, and what it's gonna do is it's kind of like margins uh, with texture creation, where what it does is it extrapolates uh, whatever texture there is. So there's some holes, but the area next to it, let me actually just show you what I'm talking about. Uh, let me show you this nightmare. Uh, this is the texture generated. You can see it has a couple holes, but if we do the extend edges or whatever it's called, it will take this information and pretty much extrapolate it to fill the hole. So it's gonna fill it in with patches of skin that look like the surrounding patches of skin. And that's what we want in this case. So let's do expand edges on 10% and then recreate the texture. And it shouldn't take much longer, maybe a bit longer because it needs to do a bit more work. And you can see that actually did a pretty good job. There's a bit of stretching and maybe we could have done that better manually, um, but there is nothing wrong with this. Um, we could do a bit of manual fixing. I don't, I don't see why not, just to show you that it's possible. So this is the image we're gonna be working with. I'm just gonna save my Blender project uh, so I can save out this texture. So I'm, I'm trying Shift S, but it's not working. So just go to Image, uh, Save As, which is Shift S and we can call this, we can call this Obama base texture that we haven't modified yet with RGB, save as image. And we can actually uh, modify this image. So making sure we're in uh, texture painting. So this is UV editing, <laughs> uh, make sure we're in texture painting. We can actually mess around with this. So instead of material, we're gonna go to single image and make sure we select the image that we made. Um, what did we call this? I guess we need to import it because I guess we just do um, Obama base texture. Okay, cool. Now we can uh, start painting on this. And if you don't want this uh, auto generated result with the expand edges, all you have to do is you have to switch over to clone brush and then control click, let's say over here. So control click to sample, and then you can paint uh, using that texture. So for example, you know, if you wanted the eye uh, to be over here, and make this cursed result, uh, you can do that and it's also gonna update over here. But I'm just gonna do a bit of a manual correction to make it look a bit better. Uh, this should be black so we can paint. Now we're on the normal brush and we need to set this to black or something close to black. And we can just paint in the details over here. This is, you know, this is some bit of extra information but I do think it is valuable and we can do the same thing on the ear. Although that looks pretty bad. So we can, we'll make it a bit softer. So shift F to control the strength, do something like that. Just so it's not as harsh, uh, these edits we're making. And you can just keep editing this until it looks better. But let's say that you're happy with this. Um, what we're gonna do now is the face um, unwrapping because right now we have the whole head unwrapped and we have a lot of extra detail back here that is kind of wasted because we don't have images to actually project onto there. So back in the layout workspace, let's get rid of everything except the face. And we may or may not keep the ears. Sorry about the radiator. Uh, to do this, we can either manually delete some faces or what's probably easier is doing some Boolean stuff. So I'm just gonna add in a cube 
And we're going to use this cube to basically say what we want to cut away. So we're just going to do something like this. So cut away everything except for the face. I'd say that looks pretty good. Okay, so once we have our cube positioned, I'm going to select our head, which we can rename to Obama. We're going to add a modifier, and we are going to add a Boolean modifier, set to difference, and then select the cube. And when we apply this, you're not going to see that anything happened, but uh, we can delete the cube, and then you see that it did a pretty good job, although Booleans can be pretty glitchy, or maybe our cube wasn't big enough, so we have to do some manual uh, editing. So let's get rid of these edges. And then we can click L when we're hovering over this. So click L, which stands for linked. And, you know, it's going to select everything that's linked to whatever we were hovering over. And we can also delete that. And I think that looks pretty good. We can also do some manual correction here. So, or manual selection, rather. And just get rid of this uh, neck area. So just cut that off. And then L to select linked because it's its own island now. And delete that as well. Okay, cool. So now we have isolated the face. You know, it's not perfect. We have some weird polygon missing because of our uh, Boolean edits, but that's fine. And now we want to uh, basically use this to create a new image that doesn't have all the extra stuff. To do this, what we need to do is create a second UV map, which is what we're going to use to bake the texture on. So we're going to be baking from our original image, the one that we uh, got using Keen Tools, and we're going to uh, we're going to use that to bake onto a new image. Hopefully that makes sense, but I'll show you in a second. Okay, cool. So in UV editing, we can go to our, what's this called? Object data properties. In UV maps, we have our standard UV map, which you can see is this. This is what's left of it. And we can add a new UV map, which we can make sure this is selected and then hit U. Yeah, we're in faces, hit U, unwrap, and then you can see this gave us a new unwrap. And you can pick whatever you want for this because this is what our uh, final texture is going to be on. Uh, but I think this is fine, so I'm just going to rotate this by 90 degrees. And then we can use a pack islands command with uh, rotation disabled to get this to fit in here. I'm going to slide it a bit so it's in the center and scale this down. Okay, cool. And again, um, I explained this before, but now I actually have everything... Uh, here, so I can show you what I mean. We're gonna be using this image with the, our, our original UV map, and we're gonna bake from that onto our new UV map that we just created. So instead of having this small um, image from before, this small image, uh, we want the face to actually take up most of the uh, picture size, which makes sense. So make sure that your second UV map is selected, then into shading workspace. This is the material it auto uh, created. We don't need this BSDF, it's not necessary. We can just link this right in here, which is essentially an emission. And we are gonna create a new image texture by duplicating, that's fine. And we can just create in a empty image texture node, we'll create a new texture, call it final result. Yay. And, you know, I guess it makes sense to make sure that this is 2K as well, since, you know, we started with a 2K map. We're going to lose a bit of resolution, of course, because now we only have the face and not the rest of the head, which is where some of the resolution was allocated before. Uh, but this is going to be fine. Okay, cool. So now we have an empty texture. Uh, we can see it over here. It's just, you know, black. This is our final result texture. And we want to bake onto this. So again, make sure that, first of all, you have your... Uh, second UV map selected. This is important or else it's not going to bake onto this. Second of all, make sure that this node is selected. That's important as well. And then we're also going to go to cycles because you can only bake using cycles at the moment. And we are going to turn this down to one sample because that's not very important for baking emission textures. We don't care about any lighting interactions. And then go to bake, change this to emission, although combined probably works as well. We don't need any margin because uh, we already did all that before. And now we are just going to bake. And let's see what that looks like. It's going to take a moment, but um, but there you go. This is the, <laughs> this is the uh, curse nightmare that we get. And again, we just took our original texture, which was on the auto-generated UV map, and baked this onto another. And you can see this looks pretty, looks goofy, but it looks pretty good, except for, of course, this area, which is the chin, but that's just because we didn't have the uh, texture, the good texture there to begin with. So 
that is not a result of baking issues, but just, you know, the texture was garbage to begin with. And what I was talking about before is now that we have our second UV map, what we can do is we can actually do whatever we want to this. So let's say we do some relaxing on, doesn't really matter, we'll do some on here and here, or let's do uh, pinching. I just want it to look a bit different than what we did last time. So I'm just messing with our UV map. We can also, I don't know, pinch here, pinch here. We can move it over and also use um, proportional editing to uh, bring over some chunks of it. So I'm just making it deformed. This is gonna look creepy uh, when we actually bake it out. But now we have another UV map uh, that we edited. So we just altered this and we're gonna do the same thing. Uh, with this selected, so again, save this out if this is what you want, but I'm just gonna overwrite it with another bake. Uh, make sure this is selected and then in cycles, we are gonna hit bake again. And now we get another version of the same thing. This is equally valid, uh, but you see our pinching has made this look even scarier. So yeah, there you go. I think that's the general workflow. I think it's super cool you can do it with a single image, but of course, again, if you have multiple images, you can do it uh, for the head. It doesn't have to be a face unwrapping, it can be a head unwrapping, but there you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, it would be super helpful uh, for me if you want to fund these tutorials to go over to my Patreon. There are benefits for anybody who wants to donate, but more importantly, it just helps me out. So I greatly appreciate anybody who, you know, finds these valuable enough, but that's everything I got for you.